This week on Council Bluffs News, celebrate Council Bluffs. This year's theme for Celebrate CB is announced. We have reactions surrounding the big release. Council Bluffs Home Show. The annual home and landscaping showcase comes to the Mid-America Center, giving attendees ideas and tips for spring projects. Keeping a healthy heart. With February being Heart Health Month, we visit with Julie Beckaloo from Methodist Jenny Edmondson to learn more about how to take care of your heart. And Donna Shepner joins us in our in-studio interview to give us a rundown on the upcoming Shamrock Shuffle and 5K Run Walk. That and more, all on this week's Council Bluffs News. Welcome to this week's Council Bluffs News. I'm Zach Harper Blunt. Celebrate CB is back for more this upcoming May with this year's Unleash Your Un. The theme was announced February 23rd at the Council Bluffs Library and is already being prepped for. IWTV student Daniel Rambo has more with the story. It all started as a community project. I've been involved with Celebrate CB since uh, actually 1992. And it has become so much more over the years. Businesses and students and schools um, make floats and they design them to the theme. This is the Celebrate CB Parade. It is a parade to celebrate Council Bluffs. Those attending may participate in events leading up to the parade. It's something that gets the community together. Um, I don't know of a single event in Council Bluffs where we have more people together. This year's theme, Unleash Your Un, runs May 13th through the 21st. And one way Celebrate CB wants you to get excited for this year's theme is by taking an unselfie with this unbelievable sign. And what makes this parade worth it is the thousands of people that will come together. You know what, for everyone to come together and to just celebrate what makes us unique and special and celebrate our great city that we have. It's a week where the city takes pride in what the community has accomplished throughout the metropolitan area. Events are posted on the Celebrate CB website where you can find more on the upcoming parade. For your Council Bluffs News, I'm Danielle Rambo. Thanks, Danielle. The celebration will start at Rivers Edge Park on May 13th through the 14th and will end on the 21st with the parade and other events in Bayless Park. The Iowa West Foundation recently announced the awarding of $6.4 million of grants and initiative funding. The grants focus on various programs and projects that impact the area. Some of the major beneficiaries include the Rivers Edge Project receiving $1.5 million, Green Hills receiving $1.1 million, and an additional $1 million will go to the 100-block redevelopment project. Recipients say these grants are essential in helping providing funds that are needed for important projects. This was also the first time several Pottawatomie County organizations were awarded multi-year funding. Spring is just around the corner, and before you know it, you might be spending a lot of time outside relaxing or possibly doing some home improvements. This past weekend, Iowa Show Productions holds an event to help people get a start on projects to benefit their homes. It's a yearly show, helping people get ideas for home improvement. We're putting on the uh, Council Bluffs Home Improvement and Landscaping Show. The event takes place at the Mid-America Center February 26th through the 28th. The show's been going on 14 years. It's uh, started by the Council Bluffs Building and Trades Association, and we work with them to put it on. Since 2002, the expo has grown from a single room to now taking up both exhibit halls and the hallway at the MAC. 150 vendors are on hand, giving attendees advice on remodeling their homes. For some, this is the beginning of a large-scale project. We're actually looking for a metal building, and we're trying to get some information on it. And we're just making our way through the booths, finding vendors that are selling. While others ponder the options of smaller scale reconstruction. Looking to remodel my kitchen in the next year or two. Basically just got their information and they're willing to come out and take a look at what design I want and kind of give me estimates and stuff. The fun on this day isn't just for the adults. 
Home Depot sets up a workshop, giving kids the opportunity to build different items. Overall, I think it was a very good thing. Um, seen some future builders in here that have gotten some creative and used some parts to kind of expand on some of the toolboxes that we got. So we've seen a lot of neat things with the children in building those today. For those looking to improve their homes, the ability to visit numerous vendors in one location proves to be beneficial. It's it's very nice because you can you can hit multiple companies and different businesses that in a hurry. For next year's presentation, organizers hope to expand to have informative presentations on renewable energy and ways to simplify their lives. Everybody wants better efficiency, better quality, and that's that's what we try to have here at the show. If you'd like to learn more about Iowa Show Productions and future shows, their website is iowashows.com. To see upcoming events at the Mid-America Center, you can visit their website at midamericacenter.com. In news around the bluffs, the Maka House hosts an event to help bring attention to the assistance the shelter provides. The second annual Cocktails and Conversations takes place at Barley's Bar on the 100 block Thursday, February 25th. Hosted by the Micah House Guild, the event features appetizer and drink specials and a raffle for various prizes. It's just to bring awareness about Micah House and, and again to raise money and you know, of course, you know, donations are always appreciated, but more to, to bring awareness about the shelter. All proceeds at the event go towards the MICA House. The organization will host its Comedy for a Cause event, another fundraiser, in late July. Habitat for Humanity hosts an afternoon gathering for community members to network and sample some soup. Super Saturday takes place February 27th at the South Main Street location. During the two-hour event, people are able to share ideas on bettering the community and take in soup provided by the Neighborhood Network. People enjoyed themselves. We had people sharing things and sharing ideas, and so that's what we really wanted to happen is to um, be able to find out what's going on in our community and help others get to know one another. If you'd like to learn more about what Habitat for Humanity does for Council Bluffs, the website is habitatcb.org. Pheasants Forever holds one of its annual fundraising dinners. The organization's 26th banquet takes place Saturday, February 27th. Attendees fill the Trainer Community Center, being served food and an opportunity to participate in various auctions for prizes, including chances to win trips. The occasion helps the organization raise money to assist with various habitat projects in the area. What we've done is try to set aside areas where birds can roost, birds can nest, birds can winter over. Um, and it's really been quite successful. This is the second Pheasants Forever event this year, with the first being the Hunting, Fishing, Boating, and RV Expo in January. If you'd like to learn more about the organization, their website is pheasantsforeveriowa.com. Coming up on Council Bluffs News, Heart Health Month. We visit with Julie Beckaloo to get tips on keeping your ticker in shape and learn about Methodist Jenny Ed's Cardiac Center. And Donna Shubner joins us to talk about this year's Shamrock Shuffle in our in-studio interview. We'll start on the 100 block of West Broadway and it um, winds through downtown street. Why is my son having trouble in school? Finding lowest airfare to Istanbul. No, I'm tired of fighting with my son over his homework. Home walk restaurant need a review? No. <laughs> He's smart, but his mind wanders. Seven wonders of the world. Why don't you understand me? I do. I was trying to show how Connor feels every day. Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. That's a line of desks more than four miles long. We can keep students in school. Visit boostup.org and take the first step. Create new opportunities and expand your knowledge with Iowa Western's continuing and career education. It was really intimidating to go back to school, but Iowa Western made me really feel like I could do it. Our goal is to help students achieve success from education to employment. 
Learn more, including information on extra benefits for Iowa residents at iwcc.edu slash continuing underscore education. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. Hello and welcome back to Count of Bluffs News. I'm Zach Harbour Blunt, joined in studio now by Donna Shepner, the events coordinator for Bluffs Downtown. Donna, thank you for joining us today. Appreciate you having me here. And coming up is the annual Shamrock Shuffle. And can you talk a little bit about what that is? Right. It's the fourth annual Shamrock Shuffle. It's a 5K run walk. Um, it'll start on the 100 block of West Broadway. And it um, winds through downtown streets to the Rails West Museum. And they take a lap around Bayless Park and then back to the 100 block. Guessing a lot of fun with some of the activities I'll be with it. Yeah, there it is fun. Everybody's encouraged to dress up in green and as crazy as they like. So <laughs> it adds to a festive atmosphere. And there's a good handful of organizations that teamed up to put on this event this year. There are. Bluffs Downtown is working with Livewell Council Bluffs and the Council Bluffs Parks and Rec Department. And usually when you're setting up for this kind of event, kind of what are some of the things that you talk about, about just kind of what you need? Um, well, people will, um, as a I guess, prize for participating, they will get um, a pint glass. And we have a special um, twist to it this year. We're having someone dress up as a leprechaun. Oh, We're really? keeping that as a secret as to who that will be. But that person, if you beat the, the leprechaun to the finish line, you win a free beverage. Is a leprechaun going to be somebody they want to be pretty fast? So <laughs> we everybody? haven't determined that yet, how many people we want to... <laughs> He's a pretty quick runner, but we may <laughs> let some people pass him as well. And all proceeds from this event are kind of benefiting an organization, right? They are. They're going to the teammates mentoring program. Most of the proceeds are. so. And just a minute ago, you mentioned that this is the fourth annual. And just how has it grown over the years? It's pretty incredible, even just from last year to this year. We're almost at double the people. So oh, as wow. of this morning, we had 277 people registered so it's really becoming an exciting event and people have a lot of fun at this they do it's just fun to see it, the big smiles on their faces and we get a lot of great pictures that morning and pre-registration isn't required for this event is it? it's not but we sure encourage it at uh, cbshamrockshuffle.com and it's $25 for adults for ages 11 to uh, 20 it's $15 and kids at 10 and under are free all right, Donna, thank you for joining us here today. You bet. Thank you. Stay tuned. More Council Bluffs news coming up right after the break. Recycling Center. We're proud of the effort our community makes to help keep Council Bluffs beautiful by participating in our curbside recycling program. Here are some tips to make sure your recyclables are accepted. If you're confused about plastics, we can help. Numbers 1 through 5 plastic food and beverage containers are acceptable. Usually the recycling triangle and the number inside are located on the bottom of containers. Items we don't take include number 6 and 7 plastics, styrofoam, or bags of any sort although we encourage recycling plastic bags inside local grocery stores. Please be sure to check the calendar in our annual mailer or on our website to find out what items will be picked up each week. Blue Week items for your curbside bin include paper, cardboard, and glass containers. Green Week items for your curbside bin include plastic food and beverage containers, tin and aluminum containers, and tin foil. Thank you for helping us keep Council of Bluffs beautiful. At Council Plus Savings Bank, you still get personalized customer service. 
we have identity safe checking with LifeLock, identity theft protection. You get personal mortgage lending to fit your needs now and in the future. You get business banking with the latest technology because saving you time saves you money. At Council of Savings Bank, you get people who answer when you call and local employees who are actively involved in our community. Council of Savings Bank, hometown banking the way it used to be. Hey everybody! Heart disease affects one in every three women in America, but you can fight back. There's no time to lose. Mothers, sisters, daughters, families, and friends, it's time to shout louder, stand stronger, and demand change. Let's go! To the Batmobile! Dang it. To the invisible jet! Dang it. Together, we can put an end to heart disease. It's time to go red for women. I could use your help. Yeah! Learn more from the American Heart Association at www.goredforwomen.org. Since 1964, the American Heart Association has recognized February as Heart Health Month. In observance, we visit with Julie Buckaloo, cardiac diagnostic nurse from Methodist Jenny Evanson Hospital, to learn more about the risk factors of heart disease and ways to keep the ticker healthy. It's a month dedicated to going red. In February, since it's Valentine's Day, they just decided to de designate it as, as National Heart Month across the United States. All in an effort to bring awareness to a serious disease. Mostly heart disease is blockage in your arteries. So that can be caused by basically if you have a strong family history, um, high cholesterol, smoking can cause that, diabetes can cause small vessels. According to the American Heart Association, Heart disease is a leading killer in the United States, claiming nearly 800,000 lives in 2013. Part of it is um, our risk factors that we have, and a lot of it is um, also family history. And heart disease doesn't just affect the elderly. It can actually happen to anybody. We have very young people that are coming in now, so that tends to be more of somebody that maybe doesn't take care of themselves or has a very strong family history. The number of deaths from heart disease has been on the decline over the past couple decades, thanks to lifestyle changes and better treatment centers like Methodist Jenny Ed's cardiology program. We have a wonderful cardiology program. We have four cardiologists that are available. They're all interventional cardiologists, meaning that they all can um, do intervention, which means angioplasty or stents if need be. They all do heart catheterizations. They all do stress testing. That testing helps caregivers come up with a strategy to fight against early warning signs. The plan can include medication or surgery or rehabilitation center to help people who've been diagnosed with a cardiovascular condition. Anywhere from four to six weeks after they've had a heart attack or they also work with patients that have pulmonary um, problems, lung problems, or even somebody that has not had a heart attack but has had um, problems with their heart like congestive heart failure or cardiomyopathy. Despite outstanding post-trauma care, the best advice here is for individuals to be aware of noticeable symptoms. There's your classic signs like chest pain, shortness of breath, sweating, jaw pain. If any of these symptoms are observed, action should be taken immediately. If you have any heart problems at all or any um, d concerns about your heart, I would call 911 and come to the emergency room. But if you have any other concerns that you're not experiencing pain, but you think, oh, something's wrong, it's not quite normal, I would contact your primary care physician. Methodist Jenny Edmondson is offering a free peripheral vascular disease screening on April 21st. Individuals can register by calling 712-354-7600. For more information on the American Heart Association, including a ton of helpful tips and reminders, the website is heart.org. The Pottawatomie County Community Foundation announces that the 2016 grant application period is open. Nonprofit and government organizations are able to receive awards ranging from $500 to $2,000. Last year, the PCCF awarded 27 different grants, totaling $35,000. The deadline is April 1st at 5 p.m., and application procedures are available at rpccf.org. Over the past month, plans and details for a handful of senior living facilities and councilors have been announced. We sit down with Community Development Director Don Gross to get the latest on those projects in this week's development update. I believe at the February 22nd council meeting, Age Mark will get its final approval. That's a memory care facility adjacent to um, Plum Rose and Highway 6 immediately to the, I guess it'd be to the northeast of that building. Also, uh, Bethany Lutheran Home had its uh, final hearing with the council on the 16th to rezone that site and to approve their development plans for a 50-plus senior living facility north of Sylvan Drive and, and North Broadway. I assume that will start 
sometime this spring, summer. We are still progressing with Gun School. On the 8th, we provided some additional financial incentives. That project was, in fact, over budget. Uh, by quite a bit, but uh, by some additional funding, some cost cuts, uh, we believe that project will proceed as planned. Still to come on Council Bluffs News, there are plenty of animals looking for a good home at the Midlands Humane Society. Meet them in our Pets of the Week. And we wrap up the show with a look at our weekly events calendar. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules. Now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. Schedule your campus visit today. Iowa Western, the world is waiting. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. All right, give me a spot. You know my motto, safety first. They could be dangerous. I think we should call animal control. Animal control? <laughs> to be safe. Don't worry. Just... I got this. It's a new motto. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Hello and welcome to The Reaver Beat, I'm Austin LeGrand. With midterms taking place the week of March 2nd, the transfer deadline is fast approaching. This week, the Student Center hosts a transfer fair that helps students get started on that transferring process. The second floor of the Student Center becomes a temporary home for regional universities. We have over 30 different schools from around the region uh, that are here to talk to transfer students. Wednesday, February 24th, Iowa Western holds a transfer fair. Taking place once per semester, the event has staff on hand that offer various resources year-round that can assist in the transferring process. A lot of Iowa Western students aren't sure where they want to transfer when they, they're done, uh, and it's really important for them to try to think of that early on because they can start to tailor their classes that they take here. Um, to work best at the school that they're going to go. Another resource Iowa Western offers is an eight-week transfer planning course that starts in March. That class would be um, assignments and searching where do you want to go, what's important for you and in a transfer school. They really sit, figure out where you want to go and make a plan. Just a reminder, open registration for summer classes begins Wednesday, March 2nd. You can apply for classes on ROC under the registration tab in the Student Self-Services menu. Also happening on campus, Iowa Western wants your opinion on items to put in a time capsule commemorating the 50th anniversary of the school. You can send your suggestions of up to three items to Jill Clark at jclark at iwcc.edu. The chosen items will be on display at an open house May 1st and will be buried at a future date. 
Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, with your Reaver Beat, I'm Austin LeGrant. Hello, I'm Terry Gatch Mills, and welcome into Pets of the Week. We'd like to remind you to spay and neuter as we round out February, Spay and Neuter Awareness Month. And we're going to start off here with KC. Her file number is 18837. She's a yellow Labrador who's three years old. She's just had a litter of puppies, but she is ready to go on the adoption floor and she's a wonderful, sweet dog. As you can see, she's very quiet. She is a little bit overweight and we're working on getting her girlish figure back, but she's just a sweetheart. Again, her name is KC and her file number is 18837. Okay, next, we'd like to introduce you to this little cutie. Her name is Callie. She's about four months old and she's a little calico. She's just as sweet as can be. She loves to purr. She loves to be rubbed. She's just a sweet little kitty, and her file number is 19141. 19141. Next, we have Momo. She's a sweet girl. She's seven months old. She's all black. She's short haired, and she's got a wonderful, soft, beautiful, sleek coat. Her file number is 19210 Momo. And this little cutie is Tiger. His file number is 18012. He's a year and a half old and he loves to explore. He loves his catnip toys and he loves other cats. Again, Tiger, 18012. And if you're interested in any of the pets you've seen today, please come down to Midlands Humane Society at 1020 Railroad Avenue in Council Bluffs. And if you're unable to make it to our facility, you can view our pets at petfinder.com, our Midlands Humane Society Facebook page, or PetSmart in Council Bluffs where we have cats on display daily. Now time for our weekly events calendar. Family Inc. hosts Dr. Seuss Literacy Night on Thursday, March 3rd. It'll be at the Lead Multipurpose Complex at the Iowa School for the Deaf from 6 to 8. The event will feature a book fair, games and crafts, and readings. Each kid who attends will also get a free book. More details are available at familyia.org. Maple Tree Tapping takes place at Botna Bend Park on Saturday, March 5th. Beginning at 10 a.m., those who attend will get hands-on demonstrations and learn how to make maple syrup. Pre-registration is required by March 2nd and costs $5. More information is available at pacoconservation.com. The 10th annual Polar Plunge for Special Olympics takes place on Saturday, March 19th at Lake Manawa. The plunge will take place at noon with a post party at Barley's with games, food, music, and more. The cost is $75 per team, and more information is available at SOIowa.org. Thanks for watching this week's Council Bluffs News. CBTV is always looking for your feedback. You can send questions or comments to CBTV at IWCC.edu. Call 712-325-3312, or you can find us on social media. We're on Facebook and Twitter. Just search CBTV17. Remember to keep it here for the latest scores and updates for local sports in your community by tuning in to the Bluff Sports Zone with J.J. Davis. For your Council Plus News, I'm Zach Hopper-Blunt.